I'm Tony. Uh, I have a flock of seven birds. Uh, I went to a master class back in, I think it was June, and decided to bring Dave and Jamie out to my house for a couple days to work with the flock and see what progress we could make with them. I had a bunch of different goals for a bunch of different birds, but the main concern was kind of figuring out what was going on with my sulfur-crested cockatoo gizmo and helping my housekeeper learn some skills to help her interact with the birds and, and be part of that because they were mostly one-person birds going into this, and that's a challenge. So when we walked into Tony's house, I was so excited because he has such an awesome setup with a bunch of foraging trees and so much enrichment for his birds. It looks just amazing in there and looks like he really prioritizes the care of his birds. He showed us his bird room where they all have their regular cages and introduced us to his friend Lana, who he actually really wants to teach to handle his birds. Now we didn't realize that this was gonna be a huge priority going in, so it was a little new of realization for us. So we actually spent a majority majority of day one working with Lana. Hi, I'm Lana and I actually clean cages for Tony and interact with the birds three times a week. Part of the problems were uh, Gizmo had an attachment to me so we wanted to kind of work with him just to try to gauge or create a scenario where you know he wasn't so maybe obsessed with me or to where he was more calm in my presence. So what I'm trying to establish with you is a new reinforcement history. So what that means is if he's used to just being on you as reinforcement, but being on you is not necessarily a predictable outcome for you. Like you might get bit, you might not. So we want to change that and make it to where every time he sees you, he knows that you're going to pick him up. You're going to put him someplace and he's going to get this awesome treat. Okay. He's not going to just hang out on you because we don't know how that might end up with blood for both of you. You're transporting him someplace that's going to be even better. And so reestablishing that reinforcement history will help you guys have a more predictable outcome. Okay. <laughs> Tony's main concern is Gizmo, his sulfur-crested cockatoo. I guess he's just a little obsessed with Lana in all the wrong ways, and she's been really nervous to hold him. So, what does in love look like? Obsessive like he is with Lana. Um, and, um, Follows her? Is yeah, that what it's pretty high-end. Watches. And, uh, okay. Okay. It's a little hormonal. Yep. Fun times? Yep. Just like me. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Here you go. And then back off and treat. Oh, got it. I was trying to get a good read of whether or not this bird was flying at her or to her in the past, and it was a little iffy on that. So he flies to her, not at her, or at her? He's try I think he's trying to fly to her. Okay. That's my interpretation of it, but a lot of times I have my back turned or something I don't see yet. Okay. Lana, do you feel like it's at you or to you? To me. Okay. <laughs> So we just decided to work and see what we could do as far as training Gizmo to come up onto Lana nicely, stay on her arm, and get right back down. It was a little tricky, as you're about to see. Picture the treat having a direct string to his beak and his face. And you're trying to direct that attention, pull his attention over here to go on to this to get the treat. Yes, yeah, so we're going to do this. See how drawing his attention, drawing his attention. He's wheeling. Cool. Now draw his attention over here. Keep it going. Keep a little faster. And then lift your fist a little higher. Draw. Your other fist. Oops. Yeah. I'm going to put him right up against the, the wood. Yep. Go ahead and drop that in. And then go ahead and put him down. Yes. Nice. Perfect. He was excited about that. One of the things that we were trying to communicate, but it was too much all at once, is to raise your fist, you raise the, the treat fist. What was happening is I actually want you to raise this fist because you were starting to let it drop. Okay. And when that happens, he's just gonna go to the next easiest spot, right. which is going to be here. So when we were flying, for example, we're holding our birds like this. So we're not like pinching and restraining them, but there's a lot of obstacles that are 
less enticing to come down here to come right. back up here. It's just easier to stay here because the treats are coming from this side, right. right? And so we're just controlling the situation to the best of our ability to keep the bird interacting with us in ways that we like, that are acceptable. I really don't want this. I don't know this bird. I don't want him going up my shoulder. But I saw he was really focused on that treat, so I could draw his attention exactly where I wanted. And you were you were doing great with that. Just really watch. Like think of maybe lowering the elbow is going to be easier. One of the things Lana was having trouble with was her hand positioning. She kept positioning her hand in a way that was making it so that Gizmo was more likely to shoulder rush, which we were really trying to avoid. So we tried all different types of things from varying the size and the height of the perch to how we had her move him. And eventually we became very successful, but we realized what was really at play here was Lana's confidence was really low working with these birds. So we decided to change gears and have her work with some more reliable birds that are less intimidating, such as Jellybean, Tony's Eclectus Parrot, and Maisie, his military macaw. Nice, and back down. Your hand looks so nice. So <laughs> nice. I'm giving two for that because he didn't grumble. <laughs> awesome. And back down. I said it's a good one to end on. Something that we've noticed over the years is that when people are trying to rewire or relearn how to handle the birds, we have to take it one step at a time. So rather than focusing on doing three or four steps simultaneously with a bird that this person's afraid of, it's best for us to switch to a bird that they're not afraid of and individually isolate each movement. So whether it's hand position first, and then it's treat delivery second, and maybe it's clicker timing third, but by breaking it down into individual steps, it makes it easier for Lana to be able to learn what to do next. Next, we decided to work with Skittles, Tony's green wing macaw. Now, Skittles is a little bit more heightened, obviously a larger macaw and a lot more intimidating. Skittles also was not very receptive. See those feathers? Just trying to tell me no, so I'll respect that. Skittles did not want to do things and Lana was real nervous. So Tony suggested we go over to his other location, which is literally next door to his home. It's a big building that he has access to. So we took Skittles over there to work and things went much better. All right, so it turns out he has a ton of space over here. And so we decided that we're gonna try working with Skittles in a totally different environment and see if we get a different outcome. Not a different outcome. <laughs> I wish she could fly. <laughs> I'm kind of glad she can't. <laughs> no, I just think she might be more likely if she was the one coming to you versus the other way around, you know? Yeah. Hey, okay, that looks great. <laughs> oh. That is a trained response to getting a treat. Okay. So our previous owner treat, trained her to go, mmm. Mm. <laughs> She's showing me that there's an interest, right? So she sees the treat, she sees the cue, she initiates. <laughs> and then here, like, this is where I've been bitten by other people's birds in the past, but that'd be hard for her to bite me right there. And then I just kind of made sure her foot went down first. Do we want to try with Lana yeah, since we have momentum? Try. I'll try. Okay. See so if she wants it. See so if she'll initiate. She is. We're drawing that attention up and then we're putting her back down. Okay. Well, you're going to be a bird expert by the end of the day. <laughs> that's going to show her the treat. Let her initiate and step up. Go ahead. Yeah. And that's fine. Back off. Cool. That's, we'll take that. That's a win. It's, it's all right. right. There's contact and then there's a reward for that. So that's okay. So you guys are coming at it from different angles and different heights. This next one looks lower to step up. So you're going to need to hold the treat a little further away so she can't get pay before doing the behavior that you're asking. I don't That's think I was breathing. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay, so what happened there? What do you think? I gave it a trade too early. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that you you are so concerned with filling her mouth with something so that it can't be filled with you <laughs> that you are just trying to be like, shove it in her face. Yeah. So remember that you're holding the treat at a place where she has to do the behavior in order to get the treat. So it'll come. Just wait another <laughs> second. So I'll, I'll do a rep for you and I'll, I'll talk through it. So first we're going to uh, get that string attached, okay? String's attached to her face. And I'm going to offer the cue. Is she responsive? She is. We bring her up and put her down. Okay? Just do one more like that and show you. So show her the truth. She wants to slowly bring the hand in. Awesome. Bring her up, up, up. Yes. And back down. That's great. Awesome. <laughs> if, like the nerves, I get it. That's yeah. a big beat. Yeah, yeah. I'm worried. That looked great. So she already knew what you were going to do, and she was helping tell you, like, yeah, I want to do this game. I just encourage you to bring in that right fist about half the speed. The other cool thing about having access to this building is we ended up taking Jelly Bean, his eclectus there, because he was showing us how amazing Jelly Bean was in his house. Now Jelly Bean would fly from foraging tree to foraging tree, would go anywhere that Tony asked her to go, would fly to him, from him, all these things, and it was really cool to see her utilize the space of his home. So we wanted to see what that looked like in a place where she had even more space, and maybe it was a little uncomfortable because it's not as well known. Tony's been considering Jelly Bean for a free flight bird and wants to know what our opinion is. So we thought taking Jelly Bean in a brand new space would help us analyze why or why not. Now she was a lot more hesitant in this new space. It took her a little bit to kind of start doing the flights, but once she started, her flights looked really, really awesome and we had a lot of fun in the space. She knows how to manage that speed. That looked okay. really good. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. Give multiple treats. Oh multiple my time. gosh. Woohoo! Jelly Bean! She didn't hit the glass. No, so I kind of missed the beginning, but Jelly Bean flew from here to here, but like hovered, went towards us and around, and then came back down and landed on him. So it was a nice long big flight. Really cool, Jelly. Come in. Nice. Nice. We noticed that when Tony brought Jelly Bean to the master class, that she wasn't performing like she would at home, and he kept mentioning that. And so when we took her out of the in-home space and put her into the additional kind of warehouse training area, we saw the same patterns that we saw at the master class where she just kind of shuts down. So one of the things we have to focus on is getting Jelly Bean used to doing the exact same training by rebuilding all the skills in different environments. This will help develop her confidence in amazing ways. So next we worked with Merlin and Belle, his blue and gold macaws. Now both of these macaws don't look great. They've obviously been through some hard times in their lives and Tony's amazing to have just an entire flock of all rehomed and adopted birds that he's taking care of and improving their lives. But these guys were especially difficult. They are very naturally heightened in their states. I shouldn't say naturally because birds aren't naturally heightened like this. This was a little bit on the side of neurotic with sort of some of the behaviors that we saw from these guys. So what we decided to do was try to calm them by bath training at the same time as target training or asking anything of them. So we really worked on creating a calm environment where nobody was talking, there weren't a lot of loud noises, we just focused on them. I ended up doing the spray bottle. We tried a few different variations of this where Tony was trying the spray bottle, but we decided ultimately that it was such a severe case with little tendencies that we had to be hyper aware of that Dave and I decided to work on this together with Tony. So what we ended up doing was I ran the spray bottle, Dave used the clicker, and Tony was delivering the treats. And even early on in the session, when Tony was delivering the treats, I was noticing these birds getting really heightened from his movement. So we moved him closer. There was a lot of tiny little adjustments we had to make in these training sessions to make them successful. And I will say, Merlin was much easier to work with than Belle. Belle was a whole situation and it was cool though because we got two sessions with each bird on day one, which was really exciting. One of the things I noticed early on is that each of these birds went from heightened to aggressive to a brief moment of calm and then neurotic. And so we used a spray bottle to try to change the environment for them and do something they weren't used to doing, but also 
the act of bathing can result in a calm body language. So we try to take that moment of calm and extend it. So we talk sometimes about what's called the zero concept. And like if he shakes and we click, he did something. So you can understand that when I shake, I get a treat. But the zero, the idea of zero or nothing, it's like what is, what is he physically doing that earned the treat? It's like really hard for him to understand. So as usual, I'll try to do something that's a physical reaction. Even in that mess, concept of zero is fairly recent. Yeah. Something that's really good for us to... I get a lot of this out of him when we're just hanging out. Yeah, I would say bits of neurotic, like damage from the past shining through. But honestly, the behavior that I'm seeing during the training sessions look great. We're avoiding the unwanted behavior really well. We're reinforcing the behavior we want to see more of. And like, we won't have to use the mister forever, but for now it's really helping them at least get to that calm state. And eventually we'll either get more of a baiting response, which is calm, or we'll be able to get rid of the mister. <clears throat> so that calm training. We definitely learned a lot about how to socialize the birds and train them and use the training as a method to help Lana gain confidence in dealing with them and, and to be a bigger part of their lives and give them a fuller experience. Uh, in my in my home. Since the visit, I mean, as far as working with the other birds, I think it was very successful. I gained a lot of confidence with handling the birds, whereas I was more intimidated by them. I just walked away with a lot more knowledge and confidence. I think Gizmo is still a work in progress, but I also believe that with the skills that I've gained with this visit that there's a lot you know that's going to improve from this point. I think my biggest takeaway from this trip was that you know these birds are our pets and and part of what comes with that is a lot of emotional attachment and a lot of uh, preconceived notions that we want to believe are true or that we uh, sometimes convince ourselves are true and I had to take a real step back and analyze each member of my flock for who they really are and, and, and who Dave and Jamie helped me see them to be. And that's not any better or worse, it's just who they are and it's more honest and lets me work with them more on their terms instead of trying to force them to come to my terms. You know, Skittles is a good example of that because of the way she interacts with me, I thought that would translate well to other people and I thought she would be a really social bird and that's just not who she is yet you know she might get there yeah I, I think the biggest takeaway for me is is figuring out who the birds are on their own terms and accepting that and and being the one to adapt for them instead of asking them to adapt to us